Well, good morning. It is great to see you in the house of the Lord this morning. Now, if you're looking at me and you're looking at your bulletin and your sermon and stuff, obviously, I am not Michael Ritter. <laughs> I, I said to him this morning before the 8 o'clock service, he was in the 8 o'clock and word and table. I said, and it, I said, you know, Michael, it says that you're in the uh, 845 in the sanctuary 1115. Are you omnipresent? <laughs> he says, no, I'm not. He, is, uh, he went straight from Word and Table to uh, um, Dave Braddon's, and they're having a big thing there for the Confermans, who are sitting right down here in these, these pews right here. Great to see you up here with us. I know you're going to have a great rest of your day, and I hear it's going to end with a lot of ice cream. So anyway, they're going to be doing some things at their house and then going to some other places that Michael and some others are, are with them. So uh, we're just wonderful, and the confirmation is not too far away, and just great that they're part of this and doing this. And uh, so great, wonderful that you're doing that. Um, Jack would get on to me, but he, he would always remind me, please sign in the attendance pads located at the end of the pews and pass them down. Oh, I was, I was thinking maybe he's not here. I won't get in trouble. So... Uh, Please do that. The altar flowers given today, aren't they beautiful? They're given to the glory of God in honor of the Searcher Sunday School class from Casey and Cheryl Canage, and we just appreciate that so much. They are beautiful flowers. Also today, as you can see, there's a lot of stuff up here in the front, and this is our Care Team Awareness Sunday. I don't think we have done this in a long time. You can see this beautiful banner over here, and uh, Stephanie's going to talk about it a little bit with the children's sermon. And then uh, Linda will as well. So uh, we're just, you'll hear more about the care team in just a moment. Uh, blood drive is going on, and it will be ending at 1 p.m. I promise to have you out of here before that, long before that, so you can go give blood. VBS, you know, VBS here is incredible. We have about 500 and some kids. We got about 200 and some workers here, ev volunteers every day. And if you would like to that something in VBS might impact one of these young hearts for their whole life, and maybe, hopefully, for eternity. So lift them up in prayer. Prayer breakfast is coming up the, the um, first week in May, and they need some help for us um, doing that. Um, <clears throat> it, uh, last year we had a huge crowd, first time we've done it in probably 10, 10 or 15 years, from what I understand. And so if you'd like to be a part of it, there's more information on that. Would you go to Lord in prayer with me? Father, I recall the lyrics of a song. It says, we are calling on you, the God of Jacob, whose love endures through generations. We know that you will keep your covenant. We're calling on the God of Moses, the one who opened up the ocean. We need you now to do the same thing for us, for us. Oh, our, our God, we need you. The God of rock of ages, we're standing on your faithfulness. The God, we're calling on the God of Mary, whose favor rests upon the lowly. We know with you all things are possible. We're calling on the God of David, who made a shepherd boy courageous. We may not face a Goliath, but we have our own giants. You heard your children then, and I know that you hear your children now. You answered prayers back then, and you answer prayers now. You moved in power back then, and you move in power now. You were a healer, and you're still a healer. You're our Savior, and you're our Savior now because the tomb is empty. Father, we just invite your Holy Spirit to move in a mighty way in this service. In Jesus' holy name I pray, amen.
him is found on page 322, Up From the Grave He Arose. <laughs> And now let us boldly proclaim the faith we believe by saying together the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he arose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
our kids to come down for our children's moment? Clara, I see you back there. I love your dress. We got the boys coming from up at the balcony. How are you this morning? It's a beautiful morning, isn't it? Okay. All right, here they come. Come on, boys. <laughs> Good morning. How are you this morning? I want to have a seat. Okay. Today we're going to talk about one of the most beloved and well-known verses in all of the Bible. Come on, guys. That is Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I'm, I shall not want. David wrote that when he was a shepherd before he became a king. Come on in. How are you doing? Um, but what does this mean? The Lord is my shepherd. Yeah, but what is, I guess, for us to understand what the Lord is my shepherd means, we have to know what a shepherd is, right? A shepherd is somebody who takes care of their sheep. And shepherding is one of the oldest professions. It's over 6,000 years old. Shepherds carry around a long stick that has a crook, a hook at the end called a shepherd's crook. If you know what I mean? It's long, has a little bendy thing on there. And that's because this story takes place in the Middle East, where a lot of the stories in the Bible took place. And it's really rocky there and hilly. So if a sheep fell down in the rocks or something, he would take that crook and pull the sheep out to safety. Because that's what the jo job of a shepherd is, to keep them safe. The sheep knew that they could trust the shepherd in every situation. When they were hungry, what would the shepherd do? Take them to the pasture and let them feed in the pasture. When they were thirsty... Take them to a stream and let them get water. He would protect them from wolves and other animals that might want to hurt them. But they knew, again, that they could always trust their shepherd. Well, do you know of any shepherds? Well, I think you do. The greatest shepherd of all time. You see that cartoon banner? Who's that? That's Jesus. And he's got sheep on there. And there's a sheep right there, too, on that banner. You might think that you don't know any shepherds, but you know Jesus. And the Bible actually refers to us being in his, um, Jesus as our shepherd and us as his sheep many times. God takes care of us. He brings us water. He brings us to food. He brings us safety. He is a good shepherd. He knows and loves us like a shepherd knows their sheep. Jesus laid down his life for us, giving up everything to protect us and save us. We are like the sheep. We can't do much on our own. But with God, with Jesus, we can. We try to do it apart from God. But we're going to be like those sheep that fall down that rocky thing. And we're going to have to get the shepherd's crook to save us out of there. But how can we be a sheep? How can we serve Jesus? And let him be our good shepherd. I think y'all know a thing. You can read your Bible. Pray learn ways of how Jesus lived, and that's how we become his sheep. Every day you might face decisions, but you know in every decision in the, for now and the rest of your life that you can trust Jesus. So just like that banner that we have Jesus sitting there and that sheep is looking up at him, that sheep knows he can trust him, the love. And take a trip one time in the next couple weeks over to Spell Chapel and look at that stained glass above the choir loft there. It says, I am the good shepherd. And it's a picture of Jesus sitting there with seven sheep. It's really beautiful. So remember this week, whose sheep are you? We are Jesus' sheep. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Lord, we thank you that we can trust you in every situation. We thank you that your love and care for us is beyond what we could even comprehend. We pray that we will um, be able to read your word and learn how to live like you want us to live. Thank you for your care, your love, and your protection. Be with us as we go out into the world this week. Bring us back together next week. And we pray these things in your precious name. Amen.
As you've heard, this morning's scripture comes from Psalm 23. Such a familiar psalm. Many of us have memorized it. It's hard to hear something we know so well with fresh ears. But let us try, open our hearts, and hear these words, this beautiful description of our God. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, and my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord. The word of God for the people of God. Uh, emphasis Sunday. I don't think we've done this in a while where we talked about our care teams. Let me give you a, a very brief history and then Linda's going to come and tell you a little bit more about some of our teams that we have in this incredible ministry that here at Bethany. In 2000, Reverend Bob Howe, who used to stand right here, was approached by Tim and Kathy McConnell and uh, Dave, Reverend Dave Mills with the, idea, with the idea of congregational teams in response to 1 Peter 5, 2, and 3, which we see part of that is on that banner there. A steering committee was formed by nine members, uh, Reverend Dave Mills, Tim and Kathy McConnell, Liz Williams, Adele Chellis, Judy and Henry Hagen, Miriam Holliday, and Gail Courtney. The, the ministries for bereavement and um, visitation and baby welcoming were already ongoing, but they encompassed some other ministries that we're going to hear about in just a few seconds. And, and others were added over the years. Now that we have nine ministries, the Good Shepherd stained glass window behind spell, as Stephanie mentioned, is uh, the visual for our call to shepherd Bethany's flock. Linda, would you come? The scripture foundation of the care team is 1 Peter chapter 5, verses 2 and 3. Be shepherds of God's flock that is under your care, watching over them, not because you must, but because you are willing, as God wants you to be, not pursuing dishonest gain, but eager to serve, not lording it over those entrusted to you, but being examples to the flock. Following is the mission statement of the care team. We will respond to the joys and concerns of our members in such a way that members will feel God's presence. Our teams are here to serve whenever and wherever we are needed. The care teams who, who encompass many ministry groups who rejoice with those who rejoice, mourn with those that mourn, and serve those who need encouragement and support. Through this ministry, we seek to follow Christ's command to love one another as he loves us, showing his love through prayer, care, and support. Today in your bulletins, you will find a copy of our brochure listing each of the care teams. We would like to briefly tell you about each, and we invite you to follow along with us. The visitation team. These are groups of people who make personal visitations to individuals while homebound or in a care facility, knowing that they would not, that they are open to having people come and help them get through the day. The flower ministry team, these are five teams who rearrange altar flowers into smaller arrangements for individuals in care facilities and homebound. An example is up here 
on the table, which we invite you to come and see after the service. Card ministry. The team members send cards to Bethany members in need of encouragement and support. The baby welcoming ministry. A celebration gift is delivered to the new parents to welcome the newest member of their family. An example is also included with the bag and the gift up here on the, the table. Holy Communion Ministry. This team delivers the blessed communion elements once a month to church members and friends in health care facilities and to those who are homebound. We currently have three teams who minister to 18 people each month. We have a sample communion kit up front as well. Grief Support Ministry. The bereavement information is sent monthly to members following the death of a loved one. And examples of the booklets are up here for your perusal. Bereavement Ministry. Team members help to prepare and serve food for Bethany families after a funeral service. A reception is provided for families and out-of-town guests. The Prayer Shawl Ministry. This team makes hand-knitted and crocheted shawls to comfort those who are experiencing difficult times. If you like to knit or crochet, please consider joining this team. Lessons are also provided. The Plarning Ministry. Teams crochet plastic gift bags into sleeping bags or mats for homeless veterans and others in need. Help is always needed for crocheting and preparing the plastic bags. This ministry was started here at Bethany by our own Clara Stoner and has since spread to multiple churches and organizations over the years. We even have the youth who are residents at Pineland Group Home tying the bags together to make planning balls for the, planner, for the planners. If you or someone in your life is experiencing one of life's battles or sorrows, or if you would like to be a part of the care team, please contact us. You will find our contact information on the back of the brochure. Whatever your gift or talent, the Lord can use you. We invite you to come up front after the service to view some examples of our ministries. At this time, we would like to have anyone who has served in the past or currently serving on any of the many care teams at Bethany to please stand and be recognized. Thank you so much for your time and dedication to these wonderful and worthy Bethany ministries. May God continue to bless each and every one of you. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Holy God, you are our shepherd. And we are awed and so grateful for the green pastures you provide and the water that nourishes our souls. You go before us on this journey, leading us in your righteousness. The valleys and shadows we travel through cannot overcome us because you are with us, holding us in the palm of your hand. Even when surrounded by enemies, you draw our eyes to you and we are empowered. You show us goodness and mercy wherever we don't, whenever we don't deserve it. Praise God, we will dwell in your house forever. Amen and amen. And now in the words of Jesus, let us pray together that prayer that he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And now with grateful hearts, 
and let us give back a small portion from the abundance of gifts that God has bestowed on us.
gifts, God. May these gifts be used to the glory of your name, serving our church, community, and the world as we share the message of your love. Amen. For the reading of the scripture, care for the flock that God has entrusted to you. Watch over it willingly, not grudgingly, not for what you can get out of it, but because you are eager to serve God. The word of God for the people of God. You may be seated. This past week, I, uh, I dropped my uh, wife off at the airport once in the spring and the fall. She goes to um, visit her family in Oklahoma and help them with some things and give one of her sisters a little bit of rest from doing that. She would got a new suitcase, one of these um, smaller ones that you can put, you can carry on one that you can put in the overhead um, apartment, compartment. And she was thinking, well, I've got to condense what I usually take. And then she found out, well, it's just kind of heavy. And uh, so uh, she was texting me on her stop of her, um, after her first leg. And I said, well, did somebody help you? She said, no, I got it up there and I didn't hit anybody. <laughs> but many times, you've probably seen this. I've seen it. I've been guilty of what I'm about to say. Have you ever got there and you got your bag and you put it on the scales and it's too heavy? I have seen I have seen people un pulling out stuff and you know putting it in their backpack, putting it in their pockets and everything. For that bag will be I guess it's under 50 pounds I believe, maybe it's 40. Anyway, so they can get it on the airplane. Sometimes in life we carry a lot of baggage, a lot of stuff. Many times we pick it up before we almost before our feet hit the ground in the morning. And sometimes it's things like a suitcase of guilt, a back, back, backpack of discontent, of weariness, grief, loneliness, or fear. And it's no wonder at the end of each day we're exhausted because we've been carrying all this stuff. God says, put the stuff down. You're carrying bar bar burdens that you don't need to. And in Matthew, he says, he wants to lighten your load. He says, come to me, all you who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. How do we let him do that? Psalm 23 gives us a good example. As you know, David is the author of the psalm. He himself was a shepherd. He was the son of a shepherd. He is known as the shepherd king of Israel. And he knew about sheep. Isn't it interesting that it's no accident that God, many times in Scripture, both in Old Testament and the New Testament, he calls us his sheep. And I think part of that reason is, is that we are, sheep are very similar to human beings. This morning before the 845 service, a couple, we were talking, we were talking about cows I don't know how that, maybe he looked, the man read the uh, description, listening to the master's voice, and he said, what is that? And I said, well, it's going to be talking about shepherd and sheep. He says, I've seen cows. Cows are pretty smart. And I said, I agree with you. They seem to be smarter than sheep many times. But God, in, in the scripture, we are compared to sheep often. Sheep are Christian creatures of habit, following the same trail, going to the same pasture, polluting their own ground, water supply, if they're left unattended. And this brings on sickness and disease. And it says there's no other class of livestock that requires more careful handling, more direction, more constant control and care and guidance than sheep. If not, fields become overgrazed, trails become dangerous because of repair. All this, if they're left to struggle for themselves and go on their own ways and doing their own whims, in their destructive habits. Does it sound familiar? Scripture points out, most of us are stiff-necked and stubborn, a lot like sheep. And Isaiah 53 says, all like sheep have gone astray, and we have turned everyone to his own way. Humans blindly, habitually follow, dumb as sheep, and wanting to do things our way, in spite of every warning, it is very dangerous, and even sometimes deadly. Christ, the good shepherd, if a man will follow me, let him deny himself and take up his cross. And the entire chapter goes on to say, 
the manner in which the good shepherd spares no pains for the welfare of his sheep. If we want to enjoy fresh pastures, abundant life, increased health, holiness in our walk with Yahweh, the good shepherd, instead of loving self most, we're willing to love Christ and others the most. Instead of insisting on my right or our rights, forgo them for others, willing to be a servant for others, having an attitude of gratitude, and instead of exercising my will, complying to his will. The good shepherd pictured himself for us as one who had come to care for lost sheep, carefully instructs us and his disciples to be co-laborers for the ewes and the lambs and the sheep. You know, after the resurrection, about this time after, after uh, Christ came back in Scripture, if you remember the passage that he was with, the, um, he prepared breakfast for the disciples. And in that time they came in, they were kind of amazed, and there's a lot of neat things, I'm not going to preach that sermon, about where did he get the fish and how did he cook them and everything else. I bet it was the best fish ever. But anyway... He asked, remember he asked Peter, he says, Peter, do you really love me? Do you really love me? Do you really love me? And Peter says, Lord, yeah, I love you, I love you, I love you. And three times Jesus says to him, feed my lambs, feed my sheep. Peter, feed my sheep. God has no hands in this world. God has no feet in this world. God has no lips but ours, our feet and our hands and our lips. We are. You heard in that passage that I read, and you heard that Linda read it too, and it's also kind of the theme of the care team, and it has been since the beginning in 2002. He says, be eager to serve. And a lot of times we don't realize how God can use us, or we think, oh, you know, I can't do that, or I'm not good at that. God said, be eager to serve. Philip Keller. Philip Keller. Anybody ever heard of him? He wrote a great, some great books about being the 23rd Psalm. He had a book called From the Lessons from the Sheepdog. And in this, he, he talked about he had, he had acquired a new flock of sheep and more land, so he had to get more sheep. And he's thinking, I need a good sheepdog to help me with this. Anybody ever seen, you know, the seaweed? They had those, those border collies running around. And it's, it's just incredible to see. And so he saw an ad in the local village, and it says, okay, free border collie needs a good home. Hmm. He thought, maybe this is my answer to prayer. So he went. And he went to, into the village, and this lady said, come around back. This dog is crazy. <laughs> dog was about two years old. And when he went back in the back, it was in its pen. It had a little kennel, probably, you know, from me to right there, the front pews. And it was dirty and nasty. And there was a chain on the back of that dog on its back foot. And the other one it was staked, the other end of the chain, it was staked into the ground. You can imagine how happy that dog was or was not. He looked at the dog and he said, I cannot leave this dog here like this. He called the dog Lass because she had named him Lassie, which I think is about the furthest from that. She, he took Lass home. He had a great kennel, clean kennel, had a, a bed in the really nice clean bed for Lass in the kennel. He had clean water and food. But that dog would not eat it. And every time he would come near that dog in that that little kennel area, the dog would growl at him. So after about two or three days, he said, I'm going to try something completely different. I'm going to take a chance. He let the dog go on his land. He didn't live no houses or roads where near he was. He just let the dog go. About... For a couple days later, the dog didn't come back. He'd go, he'd go down the roads of his pasture looking, see if the dog was there. No dog. And about the fourth day, one evening, as he's looking out at his sheep, he looks up on a bluff that looks down over his house, and he sees the dog standing on a rock looking at him. And he says, Lass, come on. The dog turned around and ran. 
he decided, I'm going to go up, I'm going to go up there and I'm going to put some clean water and some food up there for last. Next day, he did the same thing. The water and the food that he put up the day before was gone. And he did this for about three or four days. No dog. So one day, he's looking at his sheep. He's looking out over the flock, and he's standing like this. And as he's standing there looking at his flock, he feels his wet nose talk, touch the back of his hand. Guess who? Lass. That was a moment that changed right there. And from that point on, that, sh that sheepdog, that sheepdog went everywhere that Philip went. That sheepdog learned and had, had the instinct inside of him that he knew how to protect and guide sheep. He stayed right with Philip when they would have to stay overnight and during protection when they were, the sheep were having babies. And Philip began to think, I can learn, I've learned, can learn a lot about my walk with the master, with the shepherd, the great shepherd from this dog. He says, her selfless abandonment, abandonment to his wishes made huge impact on Philip. He thought, am I this available to my master? Am I as willing to fling myself into his work? And reflecting on all of this, he said, I began to see why it is Christ calls us as his co-workers to go into the tough places. Philip said there's, he never sent his dog into hard places to hurt her. But he put her to, into challenging places to save sheep. God is calling us with our bag, the bags that we pick up every, and the burdens that we pick up every day. And he says, give them to me. Listen to my voice. By the way, that dog, he said after a while, he didn't even have to speak. He could just, he could just whistle or make hand signs. And, uh, but he, that because that dog was so in tune with what he wanted him to do. Wouldn't it be something if we're that in tune with what God wants us to do? He wants us to give him, give him our burdens. He wants us to, to put them down for he can carry them. We have care team ministries you've heard about from Linda told you. These are some ministries that you can be a part of to help others. Or maybe these are ministries that you might need for somebody to walk along beside you. Here are some of that I've heard that the Good Shepherds in various ministries have done in 2023. Listen to these stats. Many of you have been a part of this. The card team ministry sent out almost 400 cards this past year to parishioners. The home communion ministry had 100 foot. 150 plus communion served and if, if you're thinking well mark i heard the math there was three how three teams or four teams that did we to see 18 people. well there's more than just them some of our visitation folks also took communion jack and i would take communion as well as pastor ritter and others of you the flower ministry oh my goodness i can only imagine what they're going to do with these beautiful flowers and break them up and make them into vases like this that we can take to folks they arranged and delivered over 600 arrangements Quince Cody has been our primary uh, delivery person with Jack, with Jack and I. What a ministry that he brings. What a great ministry. The Grief Support sent out 344 letters, 142 grief books. And also we have a Grief Support group that meets twice a month. The Bereavement Ministry. I know a lot of you are part of helping in this, this incredible ministry. Serve food to families after the celebration of life funerals. Anywhere from about 20 to 200 people wanting a reception. The prayer shawl ministry. You see one of them. This is a yellow one down here. And we got little ones and they make baby prayer shawls. And they make ones for graduates too. This past week I went to see Katrina Patton. Some of you know it. One of the great members of her and Luke of our church. And Katrina was in the emergency room and struggling for her life, as she still is. Keep her in your prayers. I came into that ER room, and I had this, this prayer shawl that was bright orange. You can imagine what team she likes. I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> 
Katrina could barely speak and had a hard time breathing. But when she saw that the orange prayer shawl, she started crying. You know why? Because she had delivered those prayer shawls before, and she knew what it meant. It was meant that you, the body of Christ, were praying for her and praying for Luke. The Plarney ministry, oh, sweet Clara. You see it right here. They make them with bags that we get from the grocery store. And they pray over them that whoever uses them, that God will touch their life. And that they'll know that the Savior, the good shepherd, cares for them and loves them. In our visitation ministry, hundreds of visits to homes and care facilities and hospitals. Just saying, we love you. We care about you. We thank you. We, we're here for you. Linda already said it, but if, and I've said it once too. If you want to be a part of one of these ministries, here's a great opportunity to be the feet and the hands and the lips for Jesus Christ. I would say you would be a good sheepdog, but some of you might be offended, so I just say, listen to God's voice. Listen to God's voice. You can be a part of one of these ministries. Would you bow your heads with me? Lord, we thank you. The king of love, our good shepherd, whose goodness and faithfulness never fail. We lack nothing if our trust is in you. In death, death's darkest veil, I'll fear no ill with thee, dear Lord, beside me. Thy rod and thy staff may comfort thee as we take thy cross before to guide me. Good shepherd, may I sing thy praise in thy house of the Lord forever. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. I invite you to stand in our closing hymn a hymn of dedication, Christ is Alive. And I pray that you sing it as you know and believe that Christ is alive. Number 318.
again, we want to invite you, if you want to come up and look at some of the, the uh, care team stuff, please do. And I pray that as you go into this world, that you will be a reflection that Christ is alive, that that tomb is empty, and the good shepherd is with us. Amen.